All right, you've gotten through the difficult stuff, the cell signaling and all those molecular pathways, which I find so cool, but I understand it's not for everyone. But mitosis is something that is very familiar to most of us. Um, you know, they start teaching it to us in middle school. Um, I've already mentioned that interphase comes before mitosis, and you might recall from your middle school classes that mitosis includes prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, the four phases, but we have a deeper understanding of mitosis now, and there's a lot going on in prophase, and so we've added a little sub-step called prometaphase. And then, as I also mentioned in a previous screencast, Cytokinesis, the division of the cytoplasm, follows mitosis and is sometimes included in mitosis as we consider there to be just M phase, the mitotic phase, but it is distinctly different from the division of the nucleus. The cytoplasm is divided later. You can remember these steps. I have a couple of acronyms my students have come up with, two of my favorites. One of them's please make a taco, which of course we need to add a word in for our fifth phase there. So you could say Patrick, please make a taco. Or, really silly one, but it's stuck with me, is pat my awesome tummy. And you could say, please, pat my awesome tummy. It blends nicely into the five steps. Now, there's lots of great resources and pictures online of what cells look like during the phases of mitosis. But just to give you a sense of what a cell would look like during interphase, things to watch out for, well, the cell is still going to have a distinct nucleus, but you might be able to see the nucleolus as a, a denser region in that nucleus. You'll also see a pair of centrioles, which at the end of interphase is going to replicate itself. So that actually happens during G2 leading into prophase. So during prophase, you've got distinctly visible chromosomes now because the chromosomes have condensed and that uses those condensin proteins. You'll have the two centrosomes, the pair of centrosomes, and the mitotic spindle, those microtubule spindle fibers are starting to form. Prometaphase is a little bit different. You're going to see the nuclear membrane start to break down now that the DNA is condensed. You'll also see that the centrosomes start to migrate towards the poles with the help of those microtubule spindle fibers, which allows them to move. And those spindle fibers or microtubules are also going to grab onto the chromosomes and start to align them between the poles. And these, you'll read an article about this, but these microtubules are dynamic. They grow and if they don't reach a chromosome and connect they break down and they grow again and they break down and they grow again and until they start to really lock on and have tension on those chromosomes and they're able to attach because of a series of proteins called a kinetochore and these vary slightly from species to species but each kinetochore is going to stick to at least one of those microtubule spindle fibers. So you've got kind of a tug of war going on here now, and that leads us into metaphase. So at the end of that tug of war process, all the chromosomes end up aligned at the center or the equator of the cell, which is also called the metaphase plate. This is a major checkpoint. The cell is looking to make sure that it's receiving all the chemical signals that tells it that every one of those kinetochores has a microtubule, at least one, connected to it, ready, you know, attachment ready so that those sister chromatids can be pulled apart. And so that is what's coming next. So we've got all the kinetochore microtubules attached to chromosomes. There's also a set of microtubules called polar microtubules that are crossing each other 
in the cell. So you've got two different types of microtubules here, one that connects to the chromosomes and one that overlap each other from the different poles. During anaphase, you're going to see the sister chromatids move apart. That's how I always remember it. Apart and anaphase start with an A. And because those chromosomes are still, they're rod-like and they're pretty durable, but they're still stringy, you're going to see them as little V's that are facing each other if you're looking at a slide of this. Um, because the little motor proteins attached to the microtubules are actually walking those chromosomes toward each pole now. In order for the sister chromatids to be separated, of course the cohesin proteins that were holding the centromeres together have to break down. So that will also happen for anaphase to begin. And as I mentioned on the previous slide, this alignment at the metaphase plate and making sure that all the spinofibers are attached before anaphase begins is a controlled checkpoint in the cell cycle. So that's the major mitotic checkpoint is are all the spindle fibers attached. During late anaphase you're going to see that the polar microtubules have started to walk past each other which basically pushes out on the cell. Um, I'll have to show you that probably in class if it's not clicking. I can't think of another way to say it. But you've got your genetic material now pretty well separated to different sides of the cell, and so you're ready for telophase, which is where the chromosomes are fully at the poles. Vesicles of membrane start to reform the two nuclei. That requires all of those spindle fibers to get out of the way. And so you see the mitotic spindle almost completely broken down or broken down at this point. And you'll see cytokinesis will start. Um, often as soon as telophase is underway, you start to see this cleavage furrow, the little indentations in the cell begin to form. During cytokinesis, you see that membrane is pinching in at the center. That's done because of microfilaments, so actin and myosin, the same thing that move our muscle fibers, and they're forming a ring there at the center that's squeezing the two, you know, the the cell, just just like basically a rubber band, a balloon around a balloon would, and it squeezes and squeezes until the cells fully divide. Now that's only in animal cells because our membranes are flexible. In a plant cell, you've got a cell wall around the cell membrane. So the membrane can't flex and can't form a furrow. So what happens instead is called a cell plate, which are basically vesicles full of the material of the cell wall align in the center and as they fuse together, that cell wall is left in place. And one more plant specific thing about mitosis is that they have no centrioles. Um, so their centrosomes, if we called them centrosomes at all, would not have those two pairs of centrioles. Um, so we call those microtubule organizing centers, which your book also refers to um, kind of interchangeably with centrosomes. So that's a distinction I would make Animal cells have centrosomes, plant cells have microtubule organizing centers. And that's it. That's mitosis in under 10 minutes.